last round. Fight! Hello and welcome to the Last Round Podcast. I'm your host, Dan Saunders. Joining me as always, my co-host, Anton Austin. We're here at Corfit in Birmingham to speak with Princess of Pain, Lucy Payne. Hi. Thanks for having us down. Thanks for having me. I wanted to start straight away and ask you, um, what were your inspirations like to first get into fighting? Um, well, I started when I was really young. So I was only 10 when I first wanted to start training and then 13 when I actually started. Um, so I don't even know what drew me to it. Um, I grew up in a street with like all boys basically. So mm -hmm. I think if I wanted to join in and play or <clears throat> you know, be involved, yeah. I had to kind of do what they were doing. So if they were wrestling or fighting or whatever, yeah, yeah. Um, I got roped into doing that. And uh, <laughs> I don't know, um, something just pulled me to it. I'm not really sure what, it's my path. <laughs> <laughs> so you just mentioned off camera that you, um, when you were you first trained with Julie Kitchen, when you first started training. Yeah. What was that like? Um, wicked. I mean, Julie, like once I started training, Julie inspired me to, to go as far as I possibly could with it. Um, so yeah, a Touch Gloves was my first original gym. Um, I was trained under Nathan Kitchen yeah. as well as Julie Kitchen. Um, <clears throat> and yeah, like she inspired me to, to fight. And you know, th th like we were so lucky at Touch Gloves, we had more women than men. Right. So it wasn't like a, a thing like as soon as I walked in there were so many women there <coughs> I was just like yes and this is <laughs> this is where I should be um and yeah as I mentioned like whenever I go back to Cornwall now I train at Touch Gloves oh, um Amber Kitchen's now running it one of her daughters yeah, yeah. <coughs> so you just mentioned there that like you're kind of happy that there was lots of other women there w were you conscious even at that age of like not feeling that like it was almost quite a man a man a man sport um I think the f well when I when I wanted to join when I was 10 I went into a into touch gloves and I was really intimidated like as as we were saying earlier when you hear the, ha the pads being hit and <coughs> yeah. stuff like it's a proper scary so if yeah. you go in and see big blokes smashing the pads you're like oh I don't know if I want to be part of this um but yeah like when I walked into touch gloves there are so many females it's like you it's not intimidating but I think when you give anything a go what that whole like intimidating factor kind of fades away yeah, so yeah. But it definitely helped having lots of girls to kind of look up to, especially once I started competing and stuff. Yeah. How long ago was that when you were first started training there? Um, oh, so I'm 28 now. <laughs> I don't know what the maths is on that. Like 16 years? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 yeah, something like that, since I first started training. Um, so yeah, I joined when I was 13 and then I had my first fight when I was 16. No, because I was just curious if there was any kind of like obviously back then there wasn't like a Ronda Rousey or a Misha Tate or any yeah, like massive no, star th like women star at the time. I didn't have like I mean the closest thing I can think of that might have influenced me is um, <laughs> WWE. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean like it all was the boys. Back then, yeah, though, exactly. Was like all the boys used to watch it. So again, I would watch it, and um, yeah, you had like the girls like Tori Wilson. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. Rita. Like, yeah, exactly. I, I post them on my wall, don't we? I know them all. So, um, uh, like, <laughs> I think most guys did. Mm, um, yeah. But yeah, like we used to like wrestle, as I said, um, and we even had outfits. It's like I had pink, <laughs> I had pink fishnets. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that's probably what kind of pushed me more towards learning something proper. <clears throat> um, you had a period a few years ago where it seemed like no one really wanted to fight you and you were kind of like forced to fight the same person a couple of times. Yeah, um, I've had a few of those. <laughs> is it frustrating like when that when that happens? Yeah, it is. Um, I, d I especially don't like fighting the same fights if I've won. <coughs> yeah. uh, it's always different, obviously, if you've lost because then you, you've got something to prove. Yeah, well, um, but yeah, like if you win and then, and then you're asked to fight the same person, it's not the same like drive or motivation. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I've had a few problems because I would fight at 57 kilos and I'm very tall for that weight, I'd get a lot of people that wouldn't want to fight me because of my height, Yeah, yeah. which I <clears throat> understand, but at the same time, it's a little bit unfair. Like if you can make the weight, then yeah. you can't ch pick and choose opponents, yeah, yeah, can yeah. you? Like, So I've, I've <clears throat> had that a few times. Um, I had the same thing when I was in Australia. I had to fight the same girl three times. like, oh, And that was at a heavier weight as well. Yeah. So um, yeah, it's frustrating, but at the same time, like sometimes you just got to take the fights that are there. It's either fight or don't, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I guess Like so. right now, <laughs> if anyone asked to fight, I'd be like, yes, please. <laughs> yeah. I was going to say, because it seems like quite a similar thing's going on with Neve at the moment, where she like 
struggle to get opponents and stuff, and yeah. always almost having to fight the same people again. Yeah. Obviously, you fought. Her. I was wondering, like, how would you assess that fight looking back? Um. Well, Neve is obviously like she's she's a star really in the making. Like she's young. Um. She's got a wicked record. Like she's super talented. Um, she's got everything that she needs to go forward and like be on big promotions. Yeah. Um, she'll like when one championship finally opens up and does more women's weight categories, whenever yeah. that will be. I imagine she'll be someone that signed pretty quickly to it, um, which is good. But in regards to my fight with her, um, we fought at 59 kilos, which is fine, but it's a little bit heavier than what I would normally fight. Yeah. Um, but now that I'm older and stuff, it's like it was more relaxed to fight at 59. Um, the fight itself. Things for me went wrong, <laughs> as everyone saw. Yeah. Um, you, were, you were quite a bad cut in the second round. Yeah, you know? so... The, the commentators even thought, oh, no, she's done here. Yeah, and, and that, so. that was actually the first time I've ever been cut as well. Yeah. So it was a bit like, damn it. <laughs> 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 like, on my one of my first fights, like, back and yeah. on a big show and stuff. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, like, the, the game plan didn't quite go how we wanted it to once the cut had happened. Yeah. Um, Things had to change quite rapidly, obviously, with a big cut happening. And then with an eight count following it so quickly in that second round, um, things kind of went out the window to kind of, mm. you know, keep me in there for that yeah, yeah. For the yeah. start. But, um, yeah, like, it was a, it was a good fight. Um, I think I came back strong round three mm. and four. Mm. And then round five, just making silly mistakes. And obviously, Neve's smart. Yeah. She's, she's a very intelligent fighter. Um, and she's good at the counters so just silly things like um, I shouldn't have been getting my leg caught and swept and stuff like that um, but I think it was a close fight and I think it was an entertaining fight yeah, it especially for like yeah. for women's fighting I yeah, mean yeah. Um, yeah like we went the whole rounds um, a lot of back and forth yeah I think I think like everyone enjoyed it um, people whether they watched it they streamed it or they were there I think it was an exciting fight and um like it is a fight that I would take again. Like if Neve wanted to and, and I like could and we had to, you know, it'd probably be on Yoko or something again. Like yeah. I would definitely take the fight again. As I said, I lost that one, so it'd be good for me to try and win it. Yeah. Um, it's whether Neve wants to fight someone yeah, she's already yeah. beaten. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. But um, no, like she's got a super bright future ahead of her, so I wouldn't How'd blame her if she didn't want to. How do you find it fighting against southpaws? Um, harder. Southpaws? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I actually fought her southpaw. Right. for that fight so um, I had a bad shoulder injury right. uh, so I, I like tore my left shoulder so for a while because it was still weak and I was rehabbing it and stuff mm. um, I started fighting <coughs> southpaw I am actually left handed right. but I learned right handed so for years and years and years I've always done it right handed <laughs> and then I thought I know <laughs> <laughs> smart idea I'll go southpaw yeah. um, and I fought a couple of months before I fought Neve against um, Jodie Clennon name um and we only went one one round so i, th I think i cut her in the first round and then mm -hmm. they they decided mm -hmm. to stop yeah didn't come back up for the second round so i was like oh i can do this whole southpaw thing <laughs> that'll be fine yeah. <laughs> fort neve southpaw um but yeah she's just obviously stronger when you're fighting it, yeah exactly yeah. i thought it would go okay um but yeah i mean i like to be able to do both but mm. i think for that fight it would have benefited me more to yeah. be orthodox but yeah. the reason why I asked you that is because we spoke to Neve didn't we and we were talking about you know natural southpaws and fighters who switch different uh, obviously stances yeah and um, just also like the like lack, of, that yeah. lack of southpaws out there and yeah. has she ever faced a fellow southpaw herself yeah. and you know don't I mean dead, you? it is hard and mm -hmm. you, you do have to change your tactics but there's definitely a difference between someone who's being southpaw mm. for that fight or that round or whatever and then someone who's a natural self or that's trained mm. that way for yeah. years and years like yeah. like she's as i said she's really strong mm. so um like her left kicks left hands that they're just yeah. stronger than if you were just swapping stance yeah. Yeah. um but i definitely see what she means like i i don't think there is as many mm. self pause, especially um girls for her yeah. like to spar with yeah. i think girls in general there's not yeah, very many <laughs> to like get good sparring rounds in with i think she's yeah. probably just spar with chris whittle isn't it? yeah you just yeah. have to spar guys yeah. but i mean it is i think it is nice to be able to spar other girls but yeah it's definitely difficult but i'm sp i'm supposed to be fighting i was supposed to fight in april before this whole covid stuff ruined everything yeah. and um i was fighting an italian girl and she's right. a southpaw so okay. i was putting in time to like you know try and smash a southpaw <laughs> 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 but um 
but that got cancelled. That might be happening in December, but I'm not sure yet. Yeah, it's all up in hand at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. So what was it like? I'm, I, it seems like I'm stitching up here asking you about another loss, but what was it like <laughs> fighting um, in the USA against Tiffany Timebomb, who's like oh. the glory kickboxing champion? Yeah, so I fought Tiffany twice, um, both times in America. The first time I fought her, I trained really, really hard. I think I was about 20, 21, and um, I didn't feel ready for her. Mentally? Yeah. yeah. So like I was, do- I was doing well, like um, I was like fighting quite often, and I was, I was confident in my skill set, but I didn't feel ready for that big of a stage. Right. Yeah. Like the first time I fought her was in Las Vegas. <clears throat> so you can imagine like turning yeah. up in Vegas yeah, and, uh, years old, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um it was insane like the amount of interviews I had to do um for radio and all mm. sorts of stuff they're like right you're live and I'm like what yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like, okay um the medicals were insane it's like yeah. six hours in the hospital you had to have brain scans yeah. I had to have um yeah. That, didn't you? Yeah. Really professional, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, like yeah. I was there all day. Yeah. And um I had eye tests, um, I had brain testing where I had to like sit mm. with a like a specialist and do all of this stuff under pressure, like name as many animals as you can, beginning with F, go. And they would like time you wow. and they're sat and I'm like, Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I'm obviously yeah. really stupid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrible. Like balance tests, it was insane. So it was a lot to like take yeah. in, along with like Obviously, the climate of Vegas, mm. um, jet lag, like everything. And I was just like, this is nuts. And then when the fight actually came, I was so, so nervous. Like, I was proper... Pr- I'm always nervous. Yeah. Like, I get anxious yeah. for everything. But, yeah. I mean, super, super nervous. And um, I went in there, started the first round, felt okay. And then, and then like, Tiffany is a master with her range. Mm. Like, being small... She was just bouncing and out. Yeah, she moves like that. Moves uh, yeah, that yeah really fast. And I've never, ever come across anyone yeah. like that before. Um, so when she came into range, she's so fast at it. I think she caught me with an uppercut. Right. And I didn't go down, but you can see that I'm not quite yeah, there yeah, yeah, anymore. Yeah. Mm. And then kind of as I was stumbling around, she like elbowed back of my head a load, mm. <laughs> which yeah. wasn't very nice. <laughs> and um, the doctor stopped it because of the swelling. Right. Um, so yeah, as soon as I got out the ring, I was gutted gutted because I'd built myself up done all of that and then I got one round out of it yeah. um, but I did go back to fight her a few months later she had a pull out right. and um, they asked if I'd go over this time I was in Connecticut right. and uh, we went five rounds and I, I lost but by a, like a split decision is that so, Muay Thai rules again? Yeah. Yeah. yeah yeah so even though I lost like for me that was a, a big thing to like yeah, overcome because I was like oh yeah, god I'm yeah. going back in there the whole yeah. same thing again but um, yeah I mean she's another one super talented like I was, as everyone can see now, like glory yeah, champion and stuff. Things, like, yeah. um, was that online fight both both of the yes, fights? both times. What yeah. was it like fighting on that organization? That promotion. Um, for for me, it was yeah. really good. Mm-hmm. Like, I had a great experience. Like, they really looked after me. Um, the hotels and stuff were amazing. Mm-hmm. Like, it it felt like there was no expense. Yeah. Like, it wasn't mm-hmm. enough. Like, you could just have. We had all our food paid for. Like, all the hotel, the hotel, the hospital, everything done for us. Um, but then. Since then, I know Tiffany had problems and she left yeah, Lion Fight. Yeah, um, people apparently weren't getting paid mm. and stuff, like um, judges and representatives and stuff. But yeah, they seem to be picking up again now, so maybe they yeah. sorted that was out. Was it something about a belt at one point? I think Tiffany was going to sell her yeah. belt. Yeah, yeah, she was, yeah, she was advertising. Crazy. I just remember Yeah, them yeah. so um, she said that this is a few fights after I fought her for the second time. And she posted that she hadn't got paid. And I think she was on a pretty good deal with that because she was signed, so she only fought for Lion Fight. She right. had a contract. Um, and yeah, she put up a post one day like trying to sell her Lion Fight world title belt. No way. Because she was like, they haven't paid me and I have rent to pay, so who's going to buy my... I think it was just to bring attention to it. She yeah, did get paid, but... Yeah. It's a good way to do good it. Good on her, yeah. yeah. If you're actually yeah, yeah. not getting paid, it's worth doing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, she definitely brought the, <laughs> the spotlight to it, so... Yeah. How, how, what was it like fighting in Australia on Rebellion as well? Oh, wicked. Rebellion's one of the best shows ever. Um, I'm biased because I just loved Melbourne and Australia yeah. altogether. Yeah. But, um, you lived out there for a bit, didn't you? Yeah, two years I lived in Australia. So I was in Melbourne for just over a year. And then I lived in Sydney beforehand for about six months. Um, but yeah, like I got to know the, the gym that I was in, Superfight Gym. It was run by Don Miller in Melbourne. He knew Sai, who runs Rebellion, like right. really well. All of the Melbourne guys like have 
really good connections. Mm. You know, like in the UK, it can be a bit funny if someone leaves to go to someone else's gym yeah, or yeah. if you're going to train and then you come back and like sparring at other places. Yeah. <clears throat> it was none of that. Like you can go and train mm. somewhere else if you want to. And none of them get like weird Absolutely. with each other. Though, yeah, it was cool like that. Um, so yeah, they're all really good friends. So um, Sai puts on Rebellion a few times a year, mm. normally. And um, yeah, like when you go and watch it, it's, it's not like a huge show or anything, mm. but it's just run really well. And it's like Sai's so passionate about it being like proper Muay Thai. So obviously it's cheaper to fly ties in from yeah, Thailand yeah, to Australia. Closer, yeah, it's a bit closer, yeah. but um, yeah, like he'll, he'll fly in like proper opponents and it's just, it's just a really nice show. And um, yeah, loads of people go to watch it. So even when I wasn't fighting on it, like every time a rebellion started to come close, everyone's like, oh my God, have you got your tickets already? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. How popular is it over there then? Is it within the Australian people, Muay Thai? As in, yeah, really popular. Right? Yeah, really popular. Yeah. Um, I loved training out there. I, um, I trained at Bulldog Gym when I was in Sydney under Nick Stone, right. who's originally from England. Okay. Um, I didn't get any fights whilst I was with him, unfortunately. Um, but then when I went to Melbourne to train with Don, um, I had six fights <coughs> for him. Right. And um, I absolutely loved it because it, it's like Thailand. Like Don has fought and spent a lot of time in Thailand himself. Mm. So he used to have like all his training camps out there. Um, he, he's married to like a Thai lady. So their, their connections to Thailand are still like really, really yeah, strong. Yeah. Um, and he sends quite a lot of his boys over to Sanctuary Noise Gym right. to do like fight camps as well. Um, but yeah, like the training's like three hours a night. Proper, it is like being in Thailand, yeah. but everyone speaks English, yeah. <laughs> so it's even better. Or yeah. broken English. I've, I've, met, I've met quite a few Australian lads when I was in Thailand training. Mm. Yeah, there's quite yeah. a lot of them over there. Yeah, I think because it's so much more like it's cheaper and closer for them. Like mm. they just go all the time. Yeah. Yeah. So you mentioned Thailand there. What? What's your views on Thailand? I know like that women can be qu uh, treated quite unfairly over there and like yeah. kind of overlooked in the sport. Mm -hmm. um, what's your experiences with being over there? I, myself, I've had it fine. I've only fought in Thailand twice. So I've trained in Thailand a few times. Um, I fought in Thailand twice as part of the Muay Thai Angels. Um, was that a tournament? Yeah, it was a tournament. Yeah. It was meant to be over three months and it dragged out over two years. <laughs> <laughs> so the organization wasn't great. Yeah. Um, but like, that was that was really really cool. So it's like a wicked experience. Mm. But even with that, like you you called the angels because you're all girls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Before every fight, you have to have hair done, makeup done, and I mean like not a little bit of makeup either. Like full caked on, full yeah. face makeup. Like <laughs> okay, yeah. it was insane. Um, so all of the girls ended up like trying to scrub it off in the toilets before yeah. they fought. Because I thought like if this goes in our eyes or whatever, it's gonna yeah. be super painful. But um, I haven't experienced any of like the proper sexism and stuff in Thailand. But there are promotions at the minute, like that Muay, Muay Thai Hardcore, I think it's yeah, called, yeah. that are building women's yeah. fighters on there, mm -hmm. um, which is really, really good. They did have that argument recently, I'm not sure if you saw, where they the were elbow. trying, yeah, they yeah. were trying to stop women from being allowed to throw elbows, yeah. because they were concerned that when people are watching it, it doesn't look very nice to ha for women to get yeah, cut yeah, or to have yeah. blood on them, which I think is actually really wrong because the women train just as hard as the men. Yeah. And that you know what you're going in for mm. when you when you start training. Like when you sign up to Muay Thai, yeah. you know what it includes. Especially like, at A class fight. That's what yeah. I mean. Like if you yeah. didn't if you weren't okay with being elbowed, you wouldn't be putting yourself in there. Oh, you do kickboxing or something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, but it's uh, for Thailand as well, like they, they've only got so far with letting their girls fight on shows and stuff, and now female fights are getting televised. Like, it just felt like it was a massive step back yeah. to put them in elbow pads. Yeah. Like, if you want to throw elbows, you have to wear an elbow pad. Mm -hmm. But men don't. I think that's wrong. Yeah, it is, yeah. 100%. Why do you think that women are so overlooked over there? I'm not sure. I think it is partly... Well, I don't know. They have loads of reasons, don't they? Like, they have the whole thing of when you go into the ring women have to go under the bottom rope yeah. and stuff like that because yeah. you can't put your leg over the rope because it's considered yeah. dirty. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think it is just that their ways, uh, yeah. just obviously more behind than the modern kind of yeah. world, I suppose. But I don't know if that goes back to religious beliefs or what, but... Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly, yeah. yeah. Um, but they seem to be going in the right direction, so I hope 
it stays that way. I haven't heard anything about the elbow pads and stuff since. Yeah, no, but I, I think I think so many women like kicked off about it. <laughs> yeah, <I laughs> like, online. Yeah. yeah. You've got big stars, though, aren't you? Like Stamp, Vertex, exactly. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Just a lot of like superhero <laughs> names. Yeah. Um, yeah, and they're they're finally getting like exposure and pushing mm. female sports like even further. Like when you ask me who would be my role model, like there's young girls now that train in the gym that they know of all these girls, yeah. like they want to be like that. Yeah. So to then take a step back and say like, oh, you can't do this, you can't do this because you're a girl, or you've got to wear a face full of makeup to have a fight, like yeah, yeah. it's it's just going to, that would just be <coughs> ruining it. It would just be taking it back. Yeah, so. I can imagine even yourself, you're gonna have a lot of, you know, you almost big inspiration and idol to a lot of girls and oh, you know yeah, I mean, coming into the gym you know because there's, there's, there's only a handful like said of female fighters in yeah you know. and like with um coaching as well mm, like definitely i mean i do as well as teaching the classes here and um, i teach a lot of the kids classes and like the fitness classes and stuff but um teach the ladies classes there's not really many women instructors yeah in in like martial arts in general i think, I think so. especially with the same enthusiasm and experience as you yeah because you have boxer size and stuff like that but i think you know you, you yeah. travel the world and you and you i know. think i think as well like women like to know that like their goals are achievable because yeah. another woman has done it like yeah, i don't yeah. think it's there's nothing wrong like i know women that would rather train with men mm. but on the other hand mm. like women's bodies are a lot different and like yeah. i think their mental state is a lot different when they're training so it's nice to have a a woman to you know, yeah. talk to or look up to like yeah. that. Yeah, that's um, a good point. That's very good point. Yeah, and I mean, we've got lots of little girls at the minute that join, and I think it helps that there's a female instructor yeah, yeah, to yeah. kind of yeah, yeah. edge them in. Definitely. How do you think women fare in other combat sports and in terms of equality? Obviously, it's not as, not going to be as bad as Muay Thai is. No, I think, to be fair, well, you could take it all the way back and say, like, women aren't getting paid the same as men. Yeah, just like, in for, for, yeah, 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 um, yeah. I think there's always going to be like that little bit of like space between where the women are and the men are which I think in, over time they will catch up but yeah I mean I don't personally feel it like I come in and work and you know I get on with it and yeah. and I enjoy what I do but I'm sure there's women out there that are in in whether it's in gyms or in their job or whatever they're working just as hard as, as a man would be mm. And they're very aware that they're maybe not getting treated the same way yeah. or not getting paid the same way. I think it's like a whole global thing, yeah. really. But I, I hope it will catch up and even out. I said, I even said to Neve on like when we interviewed her that like I'd rather watch like her like knock knock another girl out or whatever than like watch two guys like clinch for five rounds. <laughs> and stuff like that. Yeah. Or, like, well, lots of people do say that they say like women's fights are quite exciting girls go for it. i don't know girls, that's, that's <laughs> maybe we're girls, just crazy <laughs> i've been to mention that earlier but like when you see girls spar sometimes there's no chill sometimes no it can escalate no it can it, like, it i can. would like to think i'm not one of those crazy yeah. people but um, i don't know the boys might say different yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i don't know yeah yeah sometimes they do go in a bit they do go in yeah <laughs> i think as well i think as well it might be that girls have more to prove yeah, maybe, yeah. So, especially if you look at, a, like, a, a fight card, there may only be, like, two female fights on it. Yeah. Or it's very rare that the main event would be, like, a female fight. So yeah. I think that when they're in there, they want to display all their skills, but they also want to show, like, don't underestimate us kind of thing. Like, we're here just yeah. the same as you guys are. Mm. So I think <clears> maybe that's why. Do you feel that type of pressure when you step in the ring? Or not, um, or not so focused? much now, but I remember... I remember when I had I had a fight before and Julie was in my corner mm. and she said before we went in there was a female fight on a few fights before me yeah. and like not just being like nasty or anything but I mean the quality of the fight was terrible yeah. like those girls it might have been like one of their first fights or something but I mean the fight was terrible <laughs> like really messy just yeah. like proper swinging for each other yeah. um, and, and then I remember Julie mm. saying like this is your time to like display that you're meant meant to be in here. Like this yeah. is you're gonna use your skills. You're not just gonna go in there and look like that. You're gonna yeah. go in there and show that you trained really hard for this and that you understand the reason why you're in yeah. there, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and that's kind of stuck with me since. And um, yeah, I mean that's what Julie always used to go in and yeah. do. And you'd never see her like doing some mad scrap or something. Like she would <laughs> yeah, always be yeah. like <laughs> technical and you know make everything look pretty yeah like, as the nice techniques clean, are meant to be yeah, yeah exactly yeah. yeah i was wondering how 
of your purse is differed from like the standard A class pay that may, that men would get. Is it the same or? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> well, so like, if um, the standard male one no. is like five hundred or whatever, like, would you be expecting to get uh, something similar or more? I um, mean, you've been like number two in your way for like three years. Like. Yeah, um, I would be happy to get the same, but everyone's really like secretive with their purses. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, not many people like to talk about it. Um, We've had a few guests on who like I know like Amari Deidre at the kickboxer. He he said when he fought. Joe Craven, he got like a couple of hundred pounds and stuff like that. I think it is. It depends on what shows you're fighting on as yeah. well, like what promotions you're on. Yeah. Um, and a massive thing I think it is for promoters, um, they want to know you're going to sell tickets. Yeah, yeah. yeah which I actually don't like because I feel like, well, if you've asked me to fight on your show, then why are you then, you then yeah. making me do all this work to yeah. sell tickets? Like, yeah. I feel like if you promote it well enough, it'll sell. And it shouldn't be on the fighters. I, I think the fighters have enough to do. Like, the fighters already have to train. They already have to cut weight. Yeah. Um, I don't think they should then be worrying about selling enough tickets to get yeah. a purse. Going, like, dropping off tickets on a day of the fight. Yeah, that's what that. I mean. And it's like, oh, well, you only get this much purse if you only sell this many tickets. And it's, or, like, commission and stuff. I'm just like, yeah. just pay the fighters. If you want the fighters to fight, pay them. It's a job. Yeah. yeah. Like, and a lot of people are doing it alongside a normal job as well. Um, so it's not easy <coughs> to do. Purse-wise, though, I mean, I don't really think there is a lot of money in Muay Thai. Yeah. Unless you sign to a big promotion, like one or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, How does it compare with the UK then to, like, organisations like Lion Fight and, you know... I can't remember what I got paid the first time I fought on Lion Fight, but the second time wasn't a lot. No. No. But well, then it was last. It was a last-minute replacement, and they, they so they paid... Again, they paid like all my flights, all my yeah. hotel, all my food. Yeah. Um, checks and stuff like that. Yeah, so everything like that. So I can't remember what I got paid for Lion Fight, but I think if you were contracted to them, mm. I think you were getting decent money per fight. Yeah. So I think at one point Tiffany was earning really good money. Yeah. Um, I think sometimes until she wasn't earning any. <laughs> yeah. Until <laughs> <laughs> so she was selling her belt. Yeah. But I mean, I'd, I'm not sure. If you get in the top five, I think Dr. Myra said, if you, when, once you enter like the top five... Of glory, top, yeah, yeah, stuff you like start that, yeah. life changing. You go into negotiations again. Yeah, because uh, I, I know certain people that have fought on glory before, and they might get like a grand, which yeah. and that's a, as a man, mm. um, which I guess is good money mm. for a fight, especially yeah. if you're doing th- only three rounds. Yeah. <laughs> but then it's like, it, like uh, Paul Carvich said, sorry to cut you off. No, go on. He said like, if you're doing an eight-week camp, and then you're fighting for a grand. That grand's like covering that whole eight weeks. Well, yeah, exactly. And that's and like, yes, you might have your training covered by your coach, mm. like your Muay Thai training or your kickboxing training or whatever. Yeah. But then if you're trying to do like a strength and conditioning program alongside that, and you don't have someone that's in your gym, then that's something else you're paying for. Yeah, you. If you're trying to do like nutrition, yeah, mm. exactly, you're paying for that as well. I mean, it's a lot that you're investing into it to then only get a grand and like, what's that like? A month's wage, yeah. really, yeah, like that. Less, to be yeah, mm-hmm. so it's not a lot. It's not a lot of money, really. Mm-hmm. And the worst part of it is you're putting your health on the line. It's like you could go into a fight for a grand and get your jaw broken, yeah. or you know, or something's really badly happened to you, and you're like, yeah. get paid that you get handed that envelope at the end. You're like, mm. <laughs> cheers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll just go get my Hobble face off stitched off a second. Said it, haven't we? <laughs> like, there's pros and cons. Like you can go in a fight first round, knock someone out, and be happy. Yeah, and so be like, whoa, you know, quickest grand I've ever made. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or like you can get swept and get booted in the face or something. You know? <laughs> yeah. yeah, have your teeth knocked out. Yeah, and be like, yeah, sweet, yeah. this will pay for my new teeth. How was it on Rebellion then? Do you remember like money wise with them? I know it's a I got, top experience. I got a thousand dollars for Rebellion, so about five hundred. Pounds, Did they expect you to sell roughly. a lot of tickets there, or no, what? not really. Um, because Don was so close with Sai, mm. he had like a lot of fighters from our gym on it. Right, so okay. I think there was like six of us or something yeah. on the show. So you just collectively sold them as a gym. Yeah. Um, you would try and sell them to your PTs and stuff, obviously, mm. but there was no pressure to yeah. sell tickets. It was just like a a big like collective work of getting yeah. everyone in the gym to kind of come along and there'd yeah. always be like a huge party and stuff afterwards which mm. I think everyone's always <clears throat> down for aren't they yeah. Yeah. go and watch the fights and then go and get pissed away <laughs> yeah, exactly yeah. so what are your views on the um the Muay Thai rankings then do you think they mean anything or do you think it's just kind of something to, like put in your bio on Instagram <laughs> um I do think they have meaning um I'm not sure like I would like to think that people get offered good opportunities 
in the order that they are ranked. Yeah. However, I don't think that's always the case. Mm. Um, for example, like, if you're number one, you should be getting the opportunities to fight abroad. Yeah, 100%. But then you'll see people that are underneath that and it's just more like the gym name or yeah. it's the way that the coaches have kind of... I don't know. I think it's a bit silly. Um, I was ranked number one at 57 for quite a while. Um, I don't think I got that many offers to go abroad. Like, not... I know other people that got fights and stuff and I'd be like, oh, that's at my weight. I could have had that. Or people that aren't even at that weight but they take it because of the opportunity. Yeah. You see that a lot. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I think it is nice if it works out properly. Like they've come, they've recently done the the world rankings for females, yeah, I saw that, yeah, like yeah. the the WBC, yeah. um, which is like about time because I, I didn't even know that that, that wasn't a thing <laughs> until someone said to me like, I, I oh, that, no. <laughs> I was like, what? They're like, no, women don't have one. I was like, well, why? Because we're fighting for the belt. So yeah, why yeah. is there no like record of who's fought who mm -hmm. or anything? Um, which I'm number two in and then the, the Italian girl Martine that I'm maybe fighting she's currently number one and then you've got the champion being Lena right, okay. um, so it would make sense like for me to fight Martine and then the winner to kind mm. of fight or challenge the champion yeah, yeah, yeah. that makes sense but I hate it when it's like hopping you just yeah. kind of yeah. I think that's silly it, it defeats the purpose there's no point in it if it's going to work like that I think that again can go back to the purses, though, can't it? And stuff mm -hmm. you might refuse the fight, so you know. What, yeah, you if you don't want to take three hundred pound for a fight, yeah. then you'll get someone below you yeah. that goes like, "Well, I will," and, and you're like, <laughs> "Opportunity." Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I totally get it. I totally get that if you get offered to go abroad for a fight, mm. you, you're more than likely going to say yeah. Who's going to turn down a paid trip yeah. to go somewhere? Mm, yeah. Yeah. Like no one is. That is true. Um, even if it's not really yours. <laughs> <laughs> So I wanted to talk about um, your social media because I saw over lockdown you were posting videos of hitting pads and stuff. I was wondering, what's it like having your own pad man at home? Um, well, <laughs> <laughs> um, sometimes really good. <laughs> <laughs> Other times, not so good. Um, so my partner, um, Nafex, used to fight as in Muay Thai as well. He's slowly like transitioning into MMA. Um, so yeah, like I'd get people messaging me in the lockdown, especially going like, oh, you're so lucky to be able to hit the pads. And I'm like, yeah, yeah you just see that 30 seconds <laughs> <laughs> of where I'm doing really well. Because <laughs> um, like I struggle sometimes to train with him because we're like a couple. Yeah. And especially in lockdown, you would like finish training. And if like, if I'm being like difficult on purpose, <laughs> so I'm, like you'd then have to like stay in together for the whole day. Yeah. Um, so it's really good in some respects and then also like hard in others. Mm. Um, he was actually teaching me like jujitsu and stuff, which was good yeah, in lockdown, nice. like to try and learn some, yeah. some other skills. See me coming into MMA soon. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I mean, I am lucky to have someone at home who cares so much about my fight career and mm. making sure that I'm still training. Um, if needed, like, if I needed to, I could train at home for a fight yeah, yeah like yeah. a bit weird like having <laughs> to spar in my living room and stuff but i mean i could make it work yeah. um, so i'm i'm really lucky with that i think that's good that you understand the journey and obviously even cutting weight and stuff like yeah, that yeah i mean yeah. like all through when we were traveling and stuff um mm. it's like that he's been that like constant person so it is really really helpful to have someone who's done it all themselves mm. to know how like your diet and cutting weight and yeah. You know, like, it's not a very exciting lifestyle <laughs> sometimes. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. you know, you go to bed early, you wake up early, you train. Um, so it's good to have someone on the same page. Last thing I wanted to ask you was, yeah. what would be your advice to women who are trying to get into combat sports? Just do it. Don't be put off. Don't hesitate. The sooner you start, the, the sooner you're on the journey you want to be on. Um, no matter what the sport is as well. So, like, as I said, I'm starting to learn a bit of jujitsu and stuff. It doesn't matter what it is that you want to do. Um, just do it. And there's always, always other people that are learning. Like, you're never going to be the only one that walks into yeah, the gym as yeah, a new yeah. person. Um, there's always other people there training. And there's actually quite a few girls. So, you, like, you'd be surprised. I think a lot of women come in, especially from my experience of teaching them, they come in and they're hesitant or, like, they're going to be worried that they're going to be paired with a guy or something. I yeah. mean, it's, it's not like that. I mean, if you go 
like test out the gym first go have a look around like have a free trial don't like pay all your money up front and then <laughs> hate it yeah. and be stuck there for 12 months <laughs> but um yeah don't be put off just just go for it Good. and also i notice you've got your youtube channel is it you've yeah it's um yeah. pro striking so yeah. it's myself and nathan we both um put up little videos yeah. and tutorials and stuff so yeah check that out <laughs> thank you for coming on thank you for having us down as well thank you for having me thank you everyone for watching we'll see you again soon